Good morning everyone. It is Aaron Schechter from the Wet Shaver Review and 365shaves.com. This morning I'm coming to you with a tip. I have been reading a couple posts about Mitchell's wool fat actually over the last couple of months about how people either love it or hate it. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more hate it type posts than love it type posts. And the biggest complaint and is I find that there's two camps of people. There's usually people that either love something or hate something based upon either the scent of the cream or soap or the performance, the actual, uh, some people debate whether there's such a term as cushion, but the glide, the protectiveness, the slickness, um, the overall performance of said cream or soap. Mitchell Wolf Fat is one of the unique soaps that never even make it that far because most people have very difficult times even lathering Mitchell's wool fat to even get to the point where they're able to even judge performance of this soap. The soap is phenomenal. It's extremely lanolin rich which actually is part of the reason that it's so difficult to lather. The more fats and the more um, fats in general you have inside of a soap, the more difficult it can be to lather if they are what I'm going to call non-saponified or available fats that are still um, not converted over to, for example, like um, uh, potassium palmate, which is uh, uh, palm oil that's been saponified by sodium hydroxide. I'm not going to get into a soaping chemistry lesson here or anything like that, but Mitchell's wool fat has a lot of available non-converted fats which are also known in the soap community as uh, super fatting and it makes it a little bit harder to lather but it makes your skin softer, it, it does a whole bunch of things for you. So anyway, on that note, I'm going to give you a couple tips here on how to lather my friend and yours Mitchell's wool fat. This puck right here has lasted me quite some time because I have, I'm one of the 37 teeners that will probably die before I use all my soaps up. But um, this is my puck right here. I've had it for a little bit, almost a year now, and I have about a quarter of a puck left of it. I actually do use it pretty often. Um, that being said, you can see there's nothing in it, just so it doesn't fall out. No water, no nothing. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna, tell you to do is you're going to soak your brush like you normally would with any soap period. Um, I find that using bore brushes actually works a lot better than using um, Badger, but Badger will work just fine. I like using my Smog 830 bore bristle brush. I find that it is the perfect brush for this soap. So I soak it in um, relatively um, tepid water, not hot, not cold. Um, just tap it. Now, here's your first tip. From a dry puck, from an absolutely dry puck, the first thing you're going to do is, I'm sure you've heard this on a lot of videos, is you're going to soak it. Wrong. You're not going to soak it. What you're going to do is you're going to wet it for about literally 10 seconds. You're going to take hot water or cold or tepid. I've really found that the temperature of the water makes no difference. A couple people say that cold water is what you have to use. A couple people say it has to be hot water. I'm going to use hot water right now and it really makes no difference because it's only about 10 seconds. This is only just to really loosen up the soap. Okay, so I just filled up the entire the entire thing is filled with water. I'm not going to tilt it because I'm not an idiot and I don't want to spill water all over myself. Okay, so that right there has been about 10 minutes. Or 10, 10 minutes, my god. It's early in the morning. 10 seconds, dump the water out. Water's already gone, okay? So now we got a nice shiny puck. And I'm already, and I'm gonna see if I can make something happen here. I'll show you. I'm gonna put this into the camera. You can see already the slickness in it, excuse me, created almost like a film already on top of that. You see that? You see that, that almost like, um, lotion-y type of thing and if you look at my finger I already have the soap on my finger that was only after 10 seconds like literally 10 seconds so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my face like you normally would when you shave you want to go into this with a pretty wet face by the way
Okay, <clears throat> now you're going to take your brush and you're going to wring it out fairly well. Okay, it doesn't have to be overly, overly dry, but pretty well. Now you're going to load for a decent amount of time. You're going to load for at least one minute. Okay. We're going to count it. I'm going to do it in my head. I'm going to count in my head. After about 30 seconds, you're going to actually reverse direction, so clockwise and then uh, counterclockwise. Okay, that was one minute. Now, you're going to notice a couple things. Number one, you have a very nice loading of soap on your brush. Okay, number one. I'm going to set your brush down because now this is the next tip. If you look inside here, there's soap built up all around the puck and on the puck itself, itself or what, what's known as a proto lather. Okay, so <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to get your finger in there. It's going to dislodge the soap, but it's the price to pay for fame and glory, I suppose. And you're going to take said soap and you're going to rub it on your face. You're going to actually rub it in almost like a pre-shave. Okay, what you're doing is you're adding additional soap to your face and almost pre-generating the lather. You're helping it along a little bit here. Okay, you're going to get as much of that out as you can. Disperse it as evenly as you can across your face or the shaving area wherever you're going to shave. By the way, if you have any facial hair that you intend on keeping, get the soap into the facial hair. That is an actual important thing. Um, use your facial hair to your advantage. It will actually help build the lather because it gives uh, agitation points for the soap to actually build a lather on, okay? So now that being said, I'm gonna set my puck down because now we're done with the actual puck. I'm gonna rinse my hand off because I don't feel like dealing with soap all over my hands. <clears throat> Dry said hands. Now back to the brush, okay? Now, all we're going to do is we're going to lather like normal. Clockwise motions. Slow around your largest area, which is your neck. Work up your face. Back to your neck. Face. You're basically going in a circle. All we're doing right now is dispersing the soap that we loaded onto our skin. Now this is where we get into the hefty stuff, okay? This will only take a moment. Now we're gonna take hot water. Now we're getting it hot water. We're gonna take it a couple drops at a time. Be, don't worry about being aggressive with, with your hot water, with, with watering and lathering this. You could be a little bit aggressive with the water, but don't 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 go too crazy because you don't want to you don't want to thin out too much. And then you're going to keep on doing exactly what you were doing before. Notice it's starting to actually build a lather. But we're going to get a thick lather. It just takes a little bit more work. Add more water.
It's getting even thicker. Now, here's another tip, okay? At this point, I have almost like a yogurt-like consistency on my face, maybe even thicker than that. Thicker than, um, I'm going to call it like a Greek yogurt type of consistency. Um, at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to add more water, but you're not going to you're not going to bear down. You're not don't don't bear down and push that brush into your face when you're lathering. Don't scrub your face at this point. At this point, point you've already exfoliated your face. At this point, you're going to use actually lighter lighter brush circular motions, almost like you're riding on top of the lather itself. So we're going to add some more water. <clears throat> I'm adding it to the top and the sides of the brush. Get it down into the knot and also onto the sides because I always start on the side of the brush. So at this point, I'm actually doing very light patterns on top of the soap itself. Now, you might be able to produce this lather much quicker than me. I have over 100 grains of hardness in my water, <clears throat> which basically equates to, like I like to say, basically chalk coming out of my faucets. Very hard water. I'm on, the munis I'm on a municipal water system. So I have very hard water it's treated with calcium buffers. So that's a bad thing. Now, I painted my face, but I'm not done. Sorry, meant to tell you that's a trick too. Paint your face like you're done. Paint it, get it done. Now we're gonna do another lather. And this is the last tip I'm gonna give you on this. And this, afterwards, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna get on the brush, okay? Hold on one second. Once again, we're gonna add some hot water to it. Sides of the brush, let it soak in for a second. And then to the knot. And I'm adding actually pretty heavy at about 10 to 15 drops at a clip, which is uh, pretty much three times the standard five drops that people tell you to use. Again, now we're going to go heavier a little bit again. just because I think I can get a little bit more out of this. I'm only using very light strokes. I'm only going, I don't know if you could tell by the way I'm doing this, I'm only going in the very, very light strokes on the top surface of the soap itself. I'm not really bearing down on my skin. Almost like bowl lathering on my face. It's like I'm just riding this, the top of the soap more so than, uh, you know, using my skin as just like a, a slick surface to, to build the lather on. Now, 
I'm going to get my face up into the camera so you can see this. That is more than enough lather built to shave. Now, on the brush itself, this is what I end up with. Now remember, I do have a chin strap beard, so I do remove lather from my face so I don't shave off hair that I don't intend to. And as you can see, lather has been built. If I pull it out, number one, we have my first pass obviously on my face. And if you look, and I did this with a review for Le Pimante V, another great soap, very different than this one though. Both of my hands are painted in lather. More than enough lather. I can't really get this in very well. I don't know how to get this shot in the video. Um, maybe if I just go like this. You can see there's more than enough to paint my entire hands. I could wash my hands in Mitchell's wool fat. It's actually not a bad thing. It probably soften my hands up really nicely. So that being said, let me rinse my hands off. That's, that was easily enough Mitchell's Wolf Fat to easily do probably, I want to say probably four passes, maybe even, maybe even more. And I actually have it painted on my face very thick. I didn't even have to go as thick as I did. It's a very slick lather because of all the lanolin. Um, it's a shame I'm taking a shower after this uh, because this would actually condition my skin very nicely. Uh, but I actually didn't prep. I just did uh, this video. I haven't taken a shower or anything yet This was all just for purposes of doing this video for you for you guys um, I'm also going to be doing um, a much quicker video on bowl lathering with Mitchell's wool fat I hope that these couple tips have helped once again. I'm Aaron from the wet shaver review and 365 shaves.com have a great weekend and God bless